Welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. everybody, this is Marco Ciappelli. Welcome to another episode of Redefining Society podcast, where we talk about society and technology. And uh, lately, we talk a lot about artificial intelligence. I made the joke that it's a drinking game. Every time you say generative AI, you have to drink something. Of course, if you are, <laughs> if you are in a bar, maybe in, uh, in the UK or somewhere around the world, if it's early in the morning, please don't do that. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Uh, but jokes apart, there is one thing that I was wondering lately because we were talking a lot about the metaverse until about a an year and a half ago. Every conversation was about the metaverse. And lately, um, I haven't really heard much about it. I know there is a company named Meta that, uh, <laughs> that changed the name, but I don't know how much it has to do with the metaverse anymore. So when I got uh, the idea of... Uh, this conversation with Roberto Capodieci, which for a moment we were thinking maybe we should do the podcast in Italian because he's a, he's a fellow Italian, although he doesn't live in Italy anymore, just like me. Uh, we were like, uh, no, nah, we'll do it in English because we think we're going to have a bigger audience for that. And so you, you guys are lucky, my audience, listening listeners, we are going in English. We're going to talk about the metaverse. And here's Roberto. Roberto, welcome to the show. Hello, hey, uh, thank you for having me in the show. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, again, I, I am excited actually because I, I have really ignored the metaverse for a few months now. So I, I will ask you if it's even still a thing. <laughs> it's still right, around. yeah, that's, <laughs> it, it seems that in the past few years we had all this wave of trends that the bubble right. up and disappears. Uh, we had, you know, blockchain and blockchain is gone, but it's not gone. And yep. then we had the metaverse, which is gone, but it's not gone. Augmented <laughs> reality, artificial intelligence was the 2023, 2024 is going to be robotics, I think. But uh, yes, it's so, and, and you know, like as you were saying, Facebook became meta in uh, really looking at the metaverse. People believed in that so much. And then now, you know, people forgot about it. But there are a lot of projects that keep moving. I actually did. You were talking about having a podcast in Italian. I, I did the, an experimental podcast. We did only 26 episodes, I think, uh, with an environmental psychologist and an architect talking about metaverse. Metaverse under the technological aspect, which was me, architectural aspect, because, you know, there are no laws of physics in the metaverse. And the relationship with the with the place where you are uh, with these psychologists, which was a very interesting thing, and uh, we uh, we analyzed many of the projects that were on. Uh, interesting uh, understanding what was actually working and what was not working, what was more cool to see and try for the minute and then abandon, and what was actually more something to go back in there. So I got my culture on the metaverse. Uh, and I have to say that uh, I do believe humanity is not ready for such an immersive uh, virtual world yet, but uh, is a good uh, means to get to augmented reality, which is actually something that I think is going to uh, stick way more than the idea of metaverse because it's way more useful and uh, mixed with artificial intelligence now. A lot of things that were nice but not practical are going to become very practical. So. You know, the combination of those technologies probably are going to bring some uh, advancement on uh, how we use technology on a daily basis, right? Yeah, and I agree, because especially when, I, when you look at things that you say from a sociological perspective, it's not just about how cool the technology is. It has to be easy to use. So there's going to be those, the early adopter, that are going to jump into it and I, now, now we're going to talk about your past a little bit and my past. So I'm going to start going there. I remember the time of when even to set up a modem, a dial right. modem, you needed a, a, like a, a degree in, in computer science or in engineering. And so only a few were just having fun with, with that back in the days. Uh, and then it become 
easy to become more accessible now the internet is on our phone so even if you don't right. know how to use a computer it's, it's so it's kind of like converging technologies and usability in a way yeah absolutely and there is there are some very funny facts i was talking to a guy you know checking the internet connectivity and this guy was uh, chatting on facebook and i told him Oh, you have internet then? Says no, I don't have internet. This is Facebook. You know, <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> the moment that you're using something like that, behind that there is the internet, and the guy had no even idea. So, and, and this is beautiful in a certain way because mm -hmm. that's how it should be, right? People should yeah. use the service without being concerned about what there is behind. Right. But uh, in it, yeah, in the same way, it's true. There was this uh, this funny idea that email will never stick because sending a fax is much easier. In a fax, mm -hmm. you take a piece of paper, write what you want, you put it inside the machine, dial the number, and it's arriving on. With the email, you need to write, and then start the computer, turn it on, uh, then put uh, with the keyboard the things in, connect with the modem. And you remember, we always call people to say, hey, I sent you an email, did you receive it <laughs> on the phone? <laughs> It was very yeah. silly because at that point there is still people that do that. I get a text that says I sent you an email. I'm like, I, okay. but now it's for the opposite <laughs> reason. I receive uh, after filter about 450 emails per day. If yeah. people don't tell me, search for my email, most probably oh, gonna yeah. miss it. You know, so that. <laughs> but yeah. at, at, at the time, it was something that people didn't look at because it was such a, a novelty. So I, I believe that if we bring this analogy to today. Uh, you know, state of technology. This may apply also for uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. I wouldn't say for artificial intelligence because these are stuck immediately in people's life. You know, I don't know somebody that work that doesn't use ChatGPT as of today, which is uh, uh, beautiful and incredible. It's a revolution on its own. But uh, decentralization, uh, which I am uh, a big uh, supporter of, uh, and uh, blockchain, all those technology are there. They had their their own spotlight moment which was bad i think for all, but now they're going to be used for actual use case which is uh, the good things at the end of the day right yeah and they so will let, connect yeah let, let's do that let's do this for the people that don't know who you are i'm sure there's a lot of people that do in the industry but my podcast there's people that are just curious about technology so give me you know a quick version because i know your your bio is actually very long i couldn't make it to it <laughs> on your website but you know a short version of how you started i kind of made a joke there about the dialogue modem because we were chatting before starting to record of how you got started into the hacking community and coding and all of that so give us a a, a short um, version of who yeah. is roberto <laughs> in less than one hour okay so. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I have to say we can do multiple episodes if you want. <laughs> Life of Roberto Part Three <laughs> out of twenty-five. Now, just simply, uh, I have an age. I'm gonna be fifty years old next year. I know I look twenty-five, but not. And uh, I was born in the right moment to serve the wave of uh, you know home computing and technology. You know that was available to the masses, and so I found myself uh, in the right place in the right moment in many occasions right um starting as a kid when i learned uh, coding then i sold the first video game when i was 10 years old only which was a big satisfaction also to see money coming in for my work uh, work my hobby <laughs> then i started the company with the authorization of the court for minors because i was underage when i started my first company and uh, from there i've been an entrepreneur more or less uh, you know hands-on uh, coder but as well manager uh, starting you know when i was 19 we were more than 50 people working with me so it was uh, already quite uh, uh, a challenge without any school because that was my university you know like a uh, real life experience in managing companies and that's been my life uh, i was uh, fascinated with telecommunications since i was a little kid i love uh, you will remember in italy phone booth use a particular token it was shaped in a particular way to make phone calls so that you cannot use yep. normal coins. And uh, I would love to buy one of these, which was 100 liras worth before it became 200 liras worth <laughs> overnight. <laughs> and uh, dial a number in Japan. Just to hear somebody pick up the phone and then the phone line will drop because it would last just a few seconds. But the idea that a little kid from Venice, Italy, 
would have somebody in Japan get up from their bed because probably it was night over there when I was making the call to go answer the phone. It was a powerful thing, right? I had the power to affect something on the other side of the planet. And this was the fascination. So telecommunication has been one of the key elements in my growth in the IT world. And, and if you think about the evolution of information technology, we start digitizing analog material, you know, like... Uh, videos and disc and music, uh, radio, we came from analog, uh, vinyl discs to compact mm -hmm. disc, uh, digital. Then we start transmitting this digital data over the network. Uh, then we start using these as services. Uh, and, uh, you know, like everything transformed to digital, right? And, and this uh, now is the phase to become decentralized. So uh, telecommunication and decentralization were interesting, particularly when... Uh, uh, BitTorrent came out. BitTorrent is a protocol to share data in a peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, it was a paradigm uh, compared to the previous way of sharing Napster uh, or others mm -hmm. where we're centralized server. I was fascinated with the fact that regulator had to change law. Before it was illegal to distribute, then it was illegal to uh, use or download the data because in a peer-to-peer -peer network, there is no way to identify one single responsible person. And this was, and you cannot even kill it because uh, so many nodes support this like uh, animal that lives his own life, right? Mm -hmm. And and that to me was the base of the future. And that when I start studying peer-to-peer uh, -peer network protocols, uh, I try to hack the BitTorrent uh, protocol to make a decentralized file system. And, and this brought me into blockchain and, uh, you know, where I am now in a long process that has a lot of other details that, <laughs> as you yeah. say, too long to share. Well, it's fascinating because you, you can tell a story for each single part of what you just described. But there All is right. one thing that it really kind of stuck in my head, actually two. So one, you the story of you using a gettone, that's what it's called in Italy, mm -hmm. to make that call. I had the fascination and I still have it for radio. And, I'm, and that's probably yeah. why I end up doing podcasts. So for me, it was the idea to pick up the radio even when I was a kid, FM or AM, or even if you take the shortwave and be able to maybe pick something, I don't know, in Italy myself also, maybe in France, maybe in Switzerland. And that being connected, I really relate with the story of you waking up someone in Japan. <laughs> so I, I had a CB, a Citizen Band's uh, machine, like... Uh, uh, and uh, that was part of it. Then we HF radios. Uh, we did the packet the data transmitting through we HF radios. Uh, so it, it was also something that worked with me. I never took uh, uh, the license for VHF, yeah. but I was paying my uh, taxation to have uh, an antenna for my CV and, uh, and and the radio communication because it's part of communication, telecommunication and communication. Yeah. So. It is. And you, you describe it very well, the, the evolution of starting with that, then the internet, the nodes, and you know, if people are familiar with how the internet was born, uh, the first communication between the university and the United States. But now we are to, you know, let's fast forward, and we are where everything is already connected. People are connected, as you said, on their phone, they don't even think it's the internet, but yeah, sorry, it is the internet. <laughs> and, and the metaverse, it's kind of to go back there it for me was it's the next level of being present um virtually somewhere and and as i always say you know we live it in hybrid life right we live a life nowadays that is online social media and the things that we do online maybe the virtual reality the metaverse video gaming uh, online video games and then we also live in the real world. But I don't think that one is less real than the other. At least that's my my theory. You know, we, we do mm. live there. So the metaverse for me was kind of like this next step of really having a place that is virtual. I, I have to say that is, uh, in fact, uh, there are very interesting aspe aspects beside the technical part, which is the one that interests me most, but psychological aspect on the... Uh, being something else, right? So people that uh, are unsecure about their presence, uh, their avatar, 
is representing or i remember even uh, going back many 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 years like almost uh, 30 years ago when uh, the first chat uh, irc internet relay chat was uh, the first thing that came out there and uh, people were not judged by their appearance because uh, they were behind the wall of text that they were writing and so strangely uh loves were born between uh, two people that they didn't even know about each other we were saying there are no women in at the time in the internet there are only guys that pretend to be women mm -hmm. and i even remember in a chat of forum for developers uh, uh, developers that pretend to be a woman just to have all the other to offer help in coding uh, you know and getting work done uh, for free uh, it, it is it is interesting how our brain get easily tricked when we don't know this is one reason why I'm also doing a podcast series uh, uh, to prevent people falling for scams, online scam, romance scam, or uh, refund scams and other things like that, because uh, uh, mostly people that is uh, less uh, strong in personality or not very, uh, let's say, they can think, you know, more and more uh, simple people, they just e tend to believe easily what it is on the other side idealizing what there is you know, on the other side of a computer and uh, the metaverse uh, increase even more this risk because uh, we can even actually see something that is not actually what it is right mm -hmm. and when you start a business uh, and people don't know anything about your business the business card and the secretary answering the phone are the only two meter of evaluation of how your good is your business have a beautiful business card a very pleasant voice and polite person answering the phone and they think your business is amazing right? <laughs> maybe you have the worst product inside that the visa versa you can have the best product but uh, you have an ugly business card and a very rude person answering the phone they think your product uh, is not good because mentally we tend to associate things is is our instinct you know that they make us survive that they bring us to this but now we're tricked and if you think with artificial intelligence today, sorry if I bring this in the table, but uh, it's going to be linked to the metaverse as well. Nowadays, you cannot believe anything. People is watching this podcast, uh, see me talking. It could be fake. You know, <laughs> there is no measure to say that I've been saying this thing. The voice is mine, but may have uh, never said this thing. I, my face is moving. I'm going to put the finger on my nose now. Maybe I never did it, right? It's all created by a computer. And uh, uh, so this level of possibility to trick the brain of somebody consuming this material, visual, audio, and who knows tomorrow, even sensory of other kind, uh, can really play crazy tricks on our brain. <laughs> so in a certain way, we need to have the time to educate people to live this kind of uh, level of technology. But technology goes so fast that we don't have anymore there are already people going recovery uh, for dependency on chat gpt you know my, my wife sometimes she has a business and she's doing amazing because she can write uh, fabulous things in english without knowing english very well and i asked what you're doing i'm chatting with chat gpt for work <laughs> this is, it becomes really uh, something that we start depending on and while before it was person to person so you need another human being on the other side now you can be in a room with 100 people that they have perfect conversation with you that look perfectly normal and they're all generated by computer which multiply the danger of uh, falling for something that is not to the you know end level <laughs> yeah it's funny because uh, going back to memory lane again uh, when you talked about the the chats the original like aol chat back in the in the 90s you it makes me think about what you what you say there was a, a famous uh, uh, joke that it was a, a one of those funny uh, drawing on the new york times but it became famous because there's two dogs that are on the computer and one said to the other in the internet nobody knows that you are a dog and it, it's kind of like symbolize that at the Absolutely. time and, and so Imagine now in the new days where you can really, not just because people cannot see you, but you can really pretend to be someone else. Right. It's, it's pretty scary. It's funny. And I'm wondering how that applies on uh, to, to the metaverse. Like now with generative AI, do, do you see 
um, a different metaverse than the one maybe you were discussing with with your uh, with the three of you guys when on the podcast. Uh, it is incredible how one year of difference uh, make everything. Right? Yeah, we did we did that in two thousand twenty two, I think twenty one, twenty two. So yeah. uh, this really was uh, before ChatGPT. It is an epoch. I think so many things. It's funny, like uh, when I watch uh, some movie or TV shows, then people is wearing a mask. I already know when has been shot because it was. <laughs> during the pandemic, right? So ChatGPT, I think it created an epoch as well. So what it was before, I had a friend that published a book before ChatGPT, and I congratulate to him. He says, because you're one of the last authors that uh, there is no doubt that you wrote the book and not ChatGPT wrote the book for you because there was not ChatGPT. Nowadays, who knows? We're going to have yeah. a new calendar before ChatGPT <laughs> and after exactly. ChatGPT. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Year one after just <laughs> but you know, no, no seriously, uh, think about the application of one thing in the other. I'd like to talk about one second about how those technologies comes together. First of all, there are bad and good in everything. So as as everything like medicine, you can use it for good, you can use it for bad. So let's just try to talk about the good side of uh, those technologies. So uh, for what the concern blockchain and decentralization. Huh? Blockchain brought the biggest miracle the blockchain brought because everybody talk about cryptocurrency, which is the last thing that interests me. But the, probably if it wasn't about money, nobody would know blockchain today, right? So uh, probably that was the good entry door, but the, the things that can do are many more than just cryptocurrencies, right? The biggest miracle is that in the digital moment of this uh, era, the information era they were living, the digital moment, uh, you can finally have uh, something unique. Before, if I have an MP3, I make 10 copies. You don't even know which is the original copy out of the 10. And, uh, you know, you distribute them, everybody has exactly the same thing. I think I cannot make a copy of my Bitcoin because if I make a copy of my Bitcoin, I give to you the copy and it's still good, eh? then Bitcoin will be worth zero today, right? So the idea that in the digital world, you can have something that is unique, that's the huge uh, revolution that blockchain brings to the table. And this applies, for example, in uh, digital properties. So yeah, a lot of big talk about NFT, Silly Monkey sold for millions, which is uh, something I don't want to even comment about uh, because uh, uh, there are, you know, there are no reason to pay this money for some monkeys, in my opinion. But uh, you can have the title of your car that is uh, like an NFT. And so when you sell the car, you pass the NFT to somebody else. And this gives the digital capacity to be something that is unique, right? And uh, in, 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 in the application of this, uh, in the metaverse, uh, like is happening in the gaming world, uh, once you buy a gun for a game uh, as an accessory to pay money, like my, my daughter use, uh, I don't make names, not to advertise, but uh, some place where there are virtual games uh, with kids and her, uh, her avatar, it must be worth two thousand dollars at least because she has the wings, the jacket, or such. There are some brands that are selling also digital assets for those avatars, and uh, the fact that uh, a decentralized system that is above the parts of uh, one vendor of a game or another allow me to take uh, my hat that I bought it in a game and then use it in another game. They're completely detached from the first, just because there is a compatibility protocol dictated by something external like a blockchain, then start giving people the possibility to accumulate value in a virtual world, okay? Which is something that is very interesting to understand because there is people that can find a job in the virtual world. And now things people that have mobility issues because they are stuck at home because they have a medical issues, they need to be next to a certain machinery or they cannot move around because they have disabilities. The possibility to live and interact through a virtual world and also make a life, making money, that's something that is possible just thanks to these latest technologies put together, right? The only risk, in my opinion, but that's my opinion only, is that everything goes in the end of a single company. They changed the name, for example, for this. Because we started everything in a decentralized way. When the email started to be used, every company had their own mail server in office, installed in a computer. So you had the thousands, hundreds of thousands of mail servers around the world. And when you distribute mail, 
mail is distributed to the mail server of each company. Today, there are four or five companies that manage all the mail of the world. So they centralize something that was supposed to be decentralized. And this is for every social media is fully centralized. There are just a few companies that all the all the information that we give them. And this need to shift back to be decentralized. We need to re-decentralize. Actually, with the technology we have today, we can do it even better. You know, so changing the paradigm in how information I, is managed. I, I felt you were reading uh, a passage from Ready Player One about the Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know that, but probably is there somebody that thinks like me. Oh yeah, Ready Player One. It's you know one of the follower of the famous Snow Crash and and, and many others. And uh, it's 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 a company that it's a book. It's a company that pretty much give access to kind of like a post, uh, not atomic, but kind of like a, a way in the future where people post work. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> where people work and study online. They put their goggles, the virtual goggles, and they go to work. They go to school, and on and and then there is an mm. adventure there. Anyway, I thought you you knew about it. It's actually a really good book. But what fascinates me about the way you presented it, and and it, and I already had an opinion about that, is again, forget the money and the fake and the NFTs and all of that. But the fact that you can trace everything, you can use it as a contract. And you can even now trace that if a, if a food product comes really from where they say it comes. Super so, insane, right? uh, I mean, the, it, that for me gives, it gives the trust that maybe we need for technology. Yeah, it removes the need of trusting, which is the beautiful things, right? Uh, right. That's, uh, that's, that's the, true. The, that's the, the, true. The, Philosophically speaking, then you don't even need the trust because you because know you it is fine, or it's not, right. right? But I lecture at the university, even though my school ends at the kindergarten. I lecture at the university <laughs> about uh, <laughs> uh, consensus mechanics uh, for the centralized peer-to-peer -peer, mm. uh, uh, systems. And I explain blockchain not with cryptocurrency, but like a, a tic-tac-toe or a chess game mm. where people can post transactions, there are moves, and the rules of the game are in the protocol in all the nodes. So if the move is uh, le le you know, legit, then uh, it passes as transaction. If not, uh, it bounces as transaction, which is this the basic concept, right? It's yep. like having... Uh, a network like a phone network they only let go through phone calls that are polite and not rude for example what or you else? know <laughs> yeah it's correct but the, the beautiful thing is this like it can reduce to the minimum common denominator what are the rules underneath uh, and allow people to build on top but guarantees all the party that uh, what goes through respect those basic rules and and this seems little but this is a huge revolution in the communication telecommunication uh, data transfer, if you want, uh, methods, right? Um, and, and I and I think uh, it's not been yet understood, <laughs> but uh, eventually will be, and it's going to be really something that uh, think a metaverse in the case of augmented reality, where the information that you are using are validated. You know that that the person is not a fake uh, or. Uh, you know, created by artificial intelligence, rather is somebody true. You can guarantee that because one thing we don't know that what you meet is always the same person. In a metaverse, everybody can personate everybody, right? Even more than you can do it with the deep you, fake. You don't know who logged in with that. Right. <laughs> but with cryptography, you can. Right. So with a sort of a cryptographical handshake, you can guarantee that even if it looks like a dog, yeah. That's the refrigerator <laughs> of your house, and not <laughs> and not the dog, right? Yeah, and, the, and there is that thing that that now it allows to bring, as you say in the video games, what you own, you can bring right. it somewhere else. And the, one of the issue I had when I was having this conversation about the metaverse was that they call it the metaverse, like there is one, right? Like you're just going uh, right. in this one metaverse, mm. but the truth was that it was like going from one planet to another. And it's not that you carry, or at least not at the time. You mm. wasn't, you weren't carrying your um, digital Gucci bag that maybe you pay three hundred fifty dollars, <laughs> maybe maybe even more. I don't know. Or your weapons, or your sword, or your wings right. from one 
metaverse to another. It's almost like, oh, no, it's just another garden wall. Look, there is, right? There is a fantastic analogy for this that many people can relate to. When internet was born, you connect to a website, right? Mostly with an IP address at the beginning because the name service was uh, still uh, experimental. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was living in Florida, if you go to HTTP Capodieci, you go to my computer. There was mm -hmm. no .com or dot whatever. <laughs> you can really register whatever you want in the name service. Anyways, uh, the idea was that you have a page with text. And when uh, hyperlinks got invented, the HTML, right, got invented, uh, the fact was that uh, if I'm writing an article about uh, trees, and there is a particular name of a tree, and somebody else at the website talking about those trees, I can link the word to their website. So when you read my article, you click the word, and you something that seems so obvious and normal today wasn't obvious at the time, mm, right? Yeah. The real idea of metaverse, which doesn't exist today, because there are many virtual worlds for a game or for another, but there is not yet. It's like there were many websites, but you need to go in each one, right? Mm. Yeah. The difference was when you can link from one to the other. Now, with the metaverse, uh, the only difference is that uh, while the web was just passive, meaning that uh, you are reading this page, doesn't matter who you are. In the metaverse, who you are matters. And you should be always the same. You cannot have one account in a metaverse, metaverse in a virtual world, <laughs> I, I, and, and, and another one in another with a different avatar. You should be always the same person that uh, travel through different servers, uh, or different virtual world, however they are managed. And the guarantee to be always the same person. So if you cut my arm in this world, I should be without my arm in the next one that I go to, mm. is given by something that uh, has to be above those servers. And and they here with a peer-to-peer -peer network like blockchain base or not, but still a decentralized uh, distributed system can record the identities with whatever happened to those identities, right? So you give me a present in a world, I should have the present with me wherever I go, which I can use or not, that's a different thing. So the first experiment for this mm. thing have been done with games now. Mm. Many games are multi-user, immersive, uh, you know, there could be in effect a little piece of what is going to be a metaverse, right? I don't know, you're <clears throat> playing a shooting game, Clean yourself from the blood, enter in the office, start working, <laughs> and then you know, go out and kill another few people, then go to school. Probably better kill them out there in the school for real, like it happens often. But, uh, you know, so the, the idea is that uh, I believe uh, that, uh, you know, even, even in school, uh, like studying, the, the, something that really puzzled me, like, okay, we know the conspiracy, the school is there just to create uh, the low class or middle class workers. Uh, mm. But uh, in the past, when I was a kid, uh, probably you're younger than me, maybe, I don't know, but I'm if the... No you, so. <laughs> you're older than me, okay, so you know better few than years. me. Few years, not many, few years. <laughs> when, uh, when we were kids, either you have an encyclopedia at home, or you have an uncle or a parent that knows very well. Or is a teacher telling you things? There is no other way for you to gain knowledge. Today, knowledge is so available. And it's just the need to learn how to yeah. <laughs> collect the knowledge, you know, how to access it. And school, they shouldn't teach you subjects. They should teach you how to learn. Uh, because that's, that's what uh, education is teaching you how to learn. absolutely because i don't i don't need a teacher that sit in front of 20 30 kids i need to teach all 30 kids the same thing going to the speed of the slowest kid or average so if it's average then the slowest feel left behind and the top one feel bored mm -hmm. you know it, it, so you need to really while an, artif an artificial intelligence uh, I don't know if you watched the movie, the movie Her. It's oh, a yeah. chick flick, but uh, you know, it gives yeah, a lot of insight. It. I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the single artificial intelligence can teach individually to every single kid a customized lesson, a color with whatever the kid likes. He likes dance, he likes soccer, he likes whatever. So mm -hmm. I can teach you math through soccer, I can teach you math through dance. I can teach. So the power of uh, teaching and the need for learning are there. 
the method that we are using is completely wrong, right? But the technology we have today can change completely the paradigm. And, and this is an important uh, aspect on the application. So the metaverse is fantastic. With the, the three people that were doing this podcast about the metaverse, uh, as I was saying, there is me, technical, an architect, uh, and for the you know uh, architects of, uh, of, of metaverse, and a psychologist that study the relationship between human and the space that they are. Yep. They made studies for which human needs to stay in contact with nature. If you stay away from nature, you really get sick. So staying next to nature is important. But it doesn't have to be real nature. You can have a painting of a jungle in the wall of your house. Mm. It works very well. You can put an helmet that stays in nature through virtual reality, and it works fantastic because the brain is stimulated in the same way. Mm. And uh, the metaverse may have this uh, effect of helping me to meditate uh, and bring me on top of the mountain, uh, to feel cozy, stay next to the fire uh, in the snow, uh, rather than uh, having this moment of uh, whiteness in the jungle while I'm still at home. So he has a lot of positive effects, and I can share this with friends. And in terms of education, this can be millions of times. I can live inside the Roman Empire. I can yeah. see uh, building the pyramids rather than, uh, you know. So... Uh, I think that uh, we need to embrace this new technology, uh, giving them a real use case, <laughs> not just because they're Yeah, cool. and, and teaching how the, we can go to the example of ChatGPT and how many teacher wants to ban it from school. That's a mistake. It's going to get into school anyway. You better you take the opportunity to teach kids how to use it. Let me ask you one last question, and then I have a feeling you can come back anytime and we keep going with this conversation <laughs> on another episode. But I've always been curious about uh, the idea of the metaverse that for someone has to be a virtual reality. For others, say, well, an augmented reality is already a metaverse. And there was some people that were like, well, even if you're playing a video game in 2D or in 3D, but on the screen, Right. and you are into the character you're already in a metaverse so what is your opinion on that does it require a certain right, I brought, I brought, no, absolutely i wrote a long article about this right so mm, okay. to me it's just the aspect of uh, putting together many words right so the the, the paradigm is this i need to be me everywhere i go okay and not different accounts so the identity has to be the same and okay. I can be in uh, even in a text uh, uh, based game, right? <laughs> Where you know, go north, go left, uh, go right, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the, the, because uh, I need to be able to have a protocol that brings me inside different worlds. That's why I'm saying metaverse doesn't exist today yet. There are right. some experiments, but when there is a, a, a protocol uh, that uh, put all this together, then you can jump from a video game to the classroom to the workspace. Uh, you know that, that will that, be the metaverse right correct exactly but it doesn't have to be helmet uh, and uh, it can be absolutely even uh, you know like uh, doesn't matter it's just a different interface mm. but the, the the juice at the end is that right is right. uh yeah because uh, for a lot of people they, that i've spoke to um, people that maybe don't understand the technology or don't want to look at the philosophy of that technology and how you, you know, you can live the experience certain things in a different world as long as you, you really experience it, you have emotions, you're kind of, you're there. But there is this idea, and I think, again, Meta maybe didn't give the, you know, didn't help into <laughs> changing people's perspective on it, is that you need to put your goggles on, provide it to you by Meta, <laughs> and then go into the meta metaverse yes. and, yeah. and not understanding that is actually a togetherness. And again, the, I, the example you brought about the, like the original internet became some sort of the metaverse itself, I think is very clear to understand even for people right. that mm -hmm. do not. The, the only difference is that I need to keep my identity with me. Right. You know, surfing the web, normally you're passive. They don't know who you are, right? You just go yeah. through many websites that they're linked to each other. Do the same thing, but keep your identity there, and then you're in the metaverse, I think. 
even if it's just text to what you see doesn't matter and of course blockchain is at the core of this and i think that uh, yeah peer to peer decentralized system that uh, manage identities because once you can guarantee the identity is the same doesn't really matter who is the person behind the identity if mm. that's always the identity that's already a guarantee right yeah. i spoke with you yesterday you can prove me today that you are the same person i don't doesn't matter if you are uh, the refrigerator <laughs> the dog <laughs> or <laughs> or uh, your or male or female or whatever <laughs> exactly correct but i know that you are that so if you if i lend you money is you the homie back money mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like yeah. at the yeah. same time uh, if uh, we had a nice chat i can continue with the chat because i'm guaranteed that you are the same person this is the key aspect you know uh and and, and this attach value meaning i can sell you items i can buy i can ask you to do work for me or i can do work for you and you know, can enable millions of uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, and that's, that's the metaverse that, uh, you know, is is powerful in terms of uh, possibilities. Then if it's VR and 3D, well, even better. Yep. Go so see now the link with Elon Musk, what they're going to oh, do, God. you know, they're going to... Oh, God. Yeah. The, th the thought yeah. police is here. <laughs> you, must, you must have seen uh, Black Mirror, uh, the series in uh, Netflix. Uh, Yep. which gives a beautiful uh, future view on, uh, you know, backing up your soul, if you want, uh, into and, and, a computer. And, and kind of scary, too. Uh, Absolutely. And, yeah. Well, it's a long, it's a long way from, uh, from a floppy disk to the metaverse. But it all started <laughs> even before that, right? With the icon of saving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Roberto, I'm I'm gonna kill the conversation here, although I want to nice. keep having it because you know we're 40 minutes in. But I will be very to have you back on the on the show and keep the conversation going. And uh, and for all the people that are listening, I hope that you enjoy. And that, that made you think. Maybe if you are our age, you can kind of, you know, have a little bit of a of a memory lane, nostalgia. Journey, you know, a little bit of nostalgia, <laughs> nostalgia, nostalgia. Like we can do it in two languages here. <laughs> and and if you're younger, you know, go check out like uh, what what the internet was before it was on the phone. <laughs> it was a little bit. I think it was more fun. But again, now I sound old. You know. Um, every every age has some new yeah. runs. I think I was yeah. talking to my little girl and say, "You are born and you don't even know what yeah. you got now and what I didn't have." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Roberto, thank you very much. I hope to it's chat with you very very soon again. Great connection, I mean. and for everybody listening, uh, subscribe to Redefine Society podcast and uh, connect with Roberto. There will be links to his website and the things that he does in the notes for this podcast. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you next time. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you learned something new and this story made you think, then share ITSP magazine with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company, wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our columns. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. <laughs>